los próximos minutos de la mano de Elon Levy, portavoz del gobierno de Israel, que ya está aquí con nosotros en la señal de Negocios Televisión. Hi, Elon, eh, thanks for coming to Negocios TV. It's a pleasure. Gracias por invitarme. Muchas gracias, Elon. Eh, in recent days, uh, there has been talk about the option of a humanitarian pace with the pressure of the United States. Uh, what are the chances of a pause and a ceasefire in this, in this war? Israel is continuing now to move against Hamas in Gaza City, the people responsible for the October 7th massacre. And at the same time, we're increasing the aid, uh, humanitarian aid coming into the Gaza Strip through Egypt. There will be no ceasefire, no matter how temporary, without a return of hostages. Hamas is brutally holding 240 Israeli hostages, including babies, inside the Gaza Strip, and we will not consider any sort of ceasefire uh, without the return of our hostages. Now, as for temporary tactical pauses, an hour here, an hour there, to get humanitarian aid in or individual hostages out, that is something we will consider. It's something we've done before, uh, but nothing wider is possible without a return of our hostages. And ultimately, this war will end with the inevitable defeat of Hamas. That is the only way that this war can end in response to the October 7th massacre. Bueno, como pueden escuchar, Elon, que va en la línea de lo que está comentando el primer ministro de Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, en las últimas horas, apuntando a que no va a haber un alto el fuego, al menos, hasta que jamás empiece a liberar a los rehenes. Sí que habla, bueno, pues de pausas tácticas que, como bien nos está explicando Elon, ya se han llevado a cabo antes. Eh, queríamos preguntarte también, eh, Elon, one of the key issues in the conflict eh, is the civilian casualties. Eh, what steps are being taken to ensure that eh, civilians in Gaza are safe in, in this moment? First of all, of course, the images we see in the Gaza Strip are heartbreaking as a result of Hamas deciding to declare war on us on October 7th. And we hold Hamas fully accountable for every civilian casualty as a result of its decision to declare war and its decision to fight that war from inside densely populated urban areas. Israel has been taking unprecedented efforts to keep civilians safe. For over three weeks, we've been urging residents of northern Gaza to evacuate south temporarily for their own safety. We made over 20,000 phone calls to people in Gaza telling them, get out of the way. Since encircling Gaza City, we have created humanitarian corridors for people to move south. Most of the residents of northern Gaza have already moved. In the last few hours, thousands of people joined them. Now, that's despite Hamas's efforts to keep them there as human shields. That is part of Hamas's strategy. Hamas is doing everything it can to keep civilians in harm's way. We're doing everything we can to get them out of danger. Bueno, Elon que nos explica los esfuerzos que está llevando a cabo el gobierno de Israel para evacuar a los civiles. Es cierto que bueno, en los últimos días han dado desde luego eh, varios plazos. Estaba explicando cómo han abierto también corredores humanitarios y cómo jamás pues, está tratando de impedir eh, bueno, pues, con todos sus esfuerzos que estos civiles puedan evacuar de Gaza. Otro de los eh, papeles principales, otro de los grandes jugadores de este conflicto sin duda es Irán, eh, Elon, I want to ask you about Iran. What is eh, the role of Iran in this conflict and what options do you see for an escalation of the conflict at the regional level? Hamas is not acting alone. Hamas is part of the Palestinian nationalist movement, but it is also part of a regional axis of evil that takes together Iran, Hezbollah in Lebanon, the Houthis in Yemen, other militias around the region that have been sowing chaos and destruction and violence across the Middle East. We know that Iran has for years given hundreds of millions of dollars to Hamas, armed it, trained it, and they share the same goal, the elimination of the state of Israel and the murder of every man, woman, and child in this country. And our warning to anyone thinking of joining this war in the North or the South is don't do it. You will be making the mistake of your lifetime. Israel does not want to fight on multiple fronts to defend our people, but if we're forced to do that, we will fight and we will win. Bueno, Elon que nos explica pues, que jamás no está solo, que Israel no quiere que el conflicto se, se extienda, teniendo en cuenta bueno, lo que ha sucedido también en las últimas horas en el Líbano y nos explicaba bueno, pues un poco el papel de Irán en este conflicto. Precisamente Irán, como les contábamos esta mañana, está acusando a Israel de tener armas nucleares y precisamente le vamos a preguntar sobre esta cuestión a Elon. Eh, just in the last few hours, Elon, eh, Iran has been accusing Israel of having nuclear weapons. What is true in these in this statements by, by Iran? Iran is a country whose regime openly vows 
a, a second genocide of the Jewish people that openly says it wants to wipe out the state of Israel and is now working towards achieving the nuclear weapons with which it can do that. And we will, of course, continue standing up against Iranian aggression, against Iran's attempts to harm our people. And in that context, it's important that the United States has sent two battle carrier groups into the Middle East as a clear message to Iran and to its proxies. If you're thinking of messing with Israel, don't do it. Keep out of this war. Bueno, pues advertencia en este caso por parte de Elon a Irán, bueno, pues que sigue intensificando, algunos apuntan a que más eh, mediante diplomacia, pero vemos que, bueno, poco a poco sigue entrando de lleno, eh, desgraciadamente, en este conflicto. Otra de las cuestiones fundamentales en este caso de Elon fue un mensaje que mandaste tú la semana pasada, las week you issued a global travel alert calling to avoid eh, displaying any at war signs of Israeli, or Jewish identity. Are you seeing a global wave of anti-Semitism around, around the world? We have seen an astonishing rise of anti-Semitism around the world, both hate speech and violent attacks against Jews. That is what has led Israel to issue an unprecedented global travel warning, telling everyone in the country to rethink whether they have to travel anywhere in the world. And if they do that, not to show signs of their Jewish or Israeli identity. I want you to understand what is happening. We're seeing people around the world marching in support of jihad, marching in support of Intifada. The Intifada was a wave of suicide bombings in Israel in the early 2000s. Suicide bombings on buses, in malls, in cafes, bars, in restaurants, and they're calling to globalize the Intifada. The world has already seen what globalize the Intifada means. Spain has already suffered from Islamic uh, extremist terror attacks on those trains in Madrid. Everyone remembers those horrible images. And so we're calling on our citizens to exercise caution when they are abroad from these dangerous people and Western governments as well to understand the extent of the domestic extremism challenge that exists and the people who are on their streets calling for violent terrorism against us but also against your societies as well. And Elon, the last question, as a consequence of this anti-Semitism uh, around the world, do you fear a wave of immigration, of immigration to Israel? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that question. Yeah, uh, I was telling you about uh, this anti-Semitism uh, that we are seeing around the world. Do you fear a wave of migration to Israel in the next, in the next months? We know that the free world is behind us and the democratic nations are lining up behind us and we've had almost every day world leaders coming to Israel to express solidarity and say very clearly that we have a right and duty to defend ourselves and that includes dismantling the terror organization that perpetrated the October 7th massacre. The British Prime Minister was here saying the UK wants Israel to win, the President of the United States saying Israel will have everything it needs to win, and the President of France urging us to fight terror without mercy. So we know that we're on the right side of history, and there's only one way that history is going to continue, and that is Israel continuing to defeat and destroy Hamas, with, of course, broad international backing. Bueno, pues hasta aquí ha llegado.